All right, guys, so we're gonna be going over the worst clients in Photoshop or design history overall. We're basically gonna be reading guys some really just awful horror stories of designers and their clients. And uh, yeah, this is what I got. So hopefully it's gonna be fun, entertaining, and just, just, just a good time, right? So uh, get back, just sit back, get into Photoshop, get ready to start designing or Illustrator, whatever you guys are in, InDesign, uh, Da Vinci, that's not photo, that's not Adobe. Regardless, it's gonna be kind of fun. So if you guys want this to be a series, let me know right now in the comments below. Of course, after you watch a little bit. But anyway, so if you guys haven't already, it's just a fun little place to be. And then just like the video if you guys like it at the end, and then just enjoy more videos of me. Just that's all I got. Let's just let's start this up. Let's do it. Could you be less helpful in your requests? These logos aren't creative enough. They look bad. Could you be more specific on what kind of look and feel you want? Well, these are not just creative. Can you do some more options? I'll know when I see it. Oh, dude, there's no shot. Like this is unfortunately of like a big thing when you have like a client who really isn't tr really trying to help you. And if you, okay, for the record, if you guys are taking the client after the first sentence of an email or a DM, first off, you're just you should you that's when you know you're not ready to charge for the record but like if you know a client you have an idea of what they want go for it but if you're if they can't take like a good like maybe a 30 minute call or like a few emails back and forth of like getting an idea what they want so that way you can go with it, like going like, with an idea of like hey i'm gonna go out with like i'm gonna go with it this way if you can't accept that we can't be together guys if there's one thing you control when you're when you're an actual producer of content or creative you can control two things one well let me just one thing you can basically choose who you accept as like the person to do the work for so just like keep that in mind you don't you don't gotta take every client and honestly your brand is also who you actually take on as a client so for the record remember that okay just just saying but is it far out ginchy and swinging uh, I worked with a client on a project targeting the tween market. The client nixed all of our ideas, even though the focus group was testing numbers were off the charts. And instead of throwing all their ideas, the clients were all in the late 40s and were pitching us concepts that were cringeworthy. Boss, politely, creative team, fresh out of high school, probably has a better grasp of the youth market trends and interests. The client snaps back, uh, I have a grasp on what youngsters find groovy. Bruh. <laughs> These guys are lost, but the thing <laughs> for the record, if you just, just know that you guys are going to 110 billion percent run into this idea, uh, where you're like, you have a marketer who's like way older than you. And just like, he thinks he knows more, but he doesn't really understand design. Also, he probably doesn't understand the actual generation. You're going to run into this. Keep your cool. Be like, just be like, no one says groovy anymore, but we can do this. Just like completely try to ignore what they were talking about and go on to the next thing. You'll help. It'll help save yourself and also save a headache. Um, okay, are you a time traveler for the 1970s? I'm helping a client design a website. We're choosing fonts. Client, that font right there, it's clean, it's edgy. There's no way I've seen that font before. I would have remembered what font is that. Ariel, bruh, bruh. Honestly, though, people are sleeping on Ariel. If you guys are needing for a sans serif font, there is a reason why Ariel is so default and like great and sexy. It's actually, from when I was, when I started, okay, maturing as a designer is knowing that Ariel is actually a good font. That's almost, I might even tweak that out. That's just saying, just saying. Please, someone stop them for the love of God. Client, the other day I saw on this website that whenever the mouse pointer moved, uh, a word followed and they would spin and blast out and come back. Okay, yeah, those are probably in the late uh, 90, wait, late 90, late 90s. Wait, what is he talking about? Bro, okay, so that took me a little, I know I read that like a maniac because I was just so confused, but do you, oh my God, I remember that. Like the, we're talking about like the, the old curses that is that is so sad that i just remembered that i forgot that was a thing client could you do that with our mission statement yeah you mean like full paragraphs blasting around the website whenever you scroll yeah also it's winter can you make it look like it's snowing on the website <laughs> jesus christ but yo I, I don't know about you i had like so i had so much fun with like those like little pointers going around like the one that lagged i love that i don't know what it could be a thing to bring back i don't know am i dumb i don't know actually now that i think about it it's definitely dumb but we did live in a pretty prime age that was that was really fun to have not giving you a sporting chance to know okay i run the tech from the high school sports team uh once i'm done with the te uh, teaching days okay i put the team sponsors up on the scoreboard in between quarters okay the lady who runs the booster program and sells the actual ads is known to be a little out there uh in midseason, everything is set up uh, and the advertisers are running on the scoreboards before the actual basketball game Client running to me. No, 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 no. Those ads are all wrong. Me. Oh, I didn't know they had to change. Uh, you wouldn't, you never sent me anything. 
client. There are seven new sponsors. Uh, they already paid good money, and you're telling me that their ads haven't been running on the scoreboard? Uh, the season is almost over. It isn't. Me, did you ever send me any of the... <laughs> did you ever send me any of the ads in rotation, client? No. Uh, yeah. Man, if there's one thing, like, I love, I love, I love the organization I work for, but if there's one thing that just sets me to a different level, it's just having to work with sponsor logos and, like, changing them all the time. Could you imagine, okay, if you're not a, if you're not a designer, could you imagine, okay, spending, like, let's say, like, three hours on this one design so that way you can multiply it by, like, 50, okay? And then, and then you do it to a point where you have to actually open all different 50 PSDs to change two logos and then the next week they say they want to add more logos and then they say they have to change the priority <sighs> could you imagine i hate i hate i hate sponsor logos so much <laughs> How to turn ad men into mad men, okay? I work in the advertisement industry. I sent a client a briefing with an Excel template to fill out uh, the needed text for a bilingual ad campaign. Client will send you the text next Monday, next Wednesday, still nothing. Uh, I should ask them about the notes. Campaign manager, they said they'll send the text today. Me, all right, cool. Thursday, here are the texts. The text comes in an unformatted Word doc file, incomplete, misleading, unorganized, a single language instead of two they wanted. Me, uh, we can start the campaign next Monday, right? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As a designer, I just, if there's one thing I like to do is I like to stay organized on my time, because that means one, okay, if we're being realistic here, creatives, we need a little bit of a break. So if you tell us something's due on Friday, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of time in between, okay? We're not going to sometimes this is kind of the case we're gonna work on it for like a good three hours maybe like chill out for like an hour play a game of power who knows right and then like go back at it you know so so when that happens okay and we have a specific time for something and whether if you change it to go forward or backward you it's like messing with the entire process of a designer you can't you can't do you can't when this is the day this has to be the day but that's never the case and this is why designers have mental issues and such as me and we struggle and we hate our lives just speaking for them. I'm just speaking for everybody here. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. So this one basically says, wait until they find out about the it's a free country part. So me, I've looked at the brief and it'll cost blank in total. Okay, the client, I thought you were a freelancer. Me, I am. Client, no, you're not. You're a charge lancer. If we're being honest here, the word freelancer is probably not the best for designers if you maybe maybe oh maybe we should become charge lancers maybe he's right loki that's a pretty good idea if you think about it like if, you, if we're being dead serious like yeah, i know it's hard for us to get paid for our money sometimes the designers so maybe except for saying we're freelancers we are charge lancers there this could be a new wave thing that's all i'm saying all right so for the last one you have the do the thing with the thing okay please client oh it's really close but there's that one thing just missing me all right tell me Client, remember that one thing I said six months ago? Make it look like that. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus. Me, do you remember? Client, actually, no, but make it look like that. You need to remember everything I've never told you and said ever. <laughs> make it do that thing. Make it do that. Me, about 8% of the time, you change your mind and actually admit it and tell me so, so I don't have to bill you. So that's why you have these meetings. You actually have said that before. Client, this one thing was an exception. Total exception, super important. Me, that thing you said six months ago. Client, yes. That thing that you yourself cannot remember. Client, yes. But I remember that long, short thing I said. Do it like that. Super, super important. Me, sure, I'll get that right on that. Client, you had better. I'm not paying unless that thing I said six months ago is done exactly how I said it. I carefully don't bring this up for the next few days and do nothing. Uh, I pay the invoice and the product is complete. Client, good, thanks. It looks like you did the thing I said six months ago. Like I tell everything, oh my God, this is so bad. Like, like I tell everyone here you're good overall, but sometimes we have to go, we gotta get firm with you and you'll get, oh my God. Uh, so I've actually had this happen once. So I want you guys to imagine that you have like a darker background, like a gradient, like, like, a, like a darker gradient background, like a picture in the back, right? So for me, I have a really color accurate model. I got the spider and everything color accurate. We're looking good. We got our Adobe RGB on this thing. It's perfect, right? So for me, I'm like, it's a perfect tone of black with a client. He was like, bro, it's a little bit too gray, blah, blah, blah. When I look at my phone, it's more like darker. When I look at my computer, it's more gray. I was like, hey, I was like that. Maybe that's just because your monitor is not that great. And he was like, yeah, but if people are looking at... <laughs> 
if people are looking at it on their computers, then it's gonna be more gray. I was like, no, bro, it's your monitor. And he couldn't resist the fact that it wasn't his monitor. But more of the story, okay? If you were a designer and you guys are wanting like really good artwork, sometimes your downfall is the fact that your color accuracy of your actual monitor is so bad that while you're designing, whether if you might know color balance and like color theory and all that stuff, you actually might have the bad monitor and you might not be able to actually make good design because your monitor is so bad and sometimes investing in your own work is really worth it. You get me? All right, so that was the end of the video here today. So hopefully it was fun. Just a little something, something. And just, I don't know. Let me know how it kind of works out. You guys want to see me do more of these. And uh, yeah, with that being said, that's all I got for you guys. Please sure to check out the channel. Check out some more videos, some tutorials, entertainment, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you guys haven't already, as always. And uh, I'll, that's all I got. So, so HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Peace. And enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your day. All that good stuff. Enjoy designing. And don't run into a bad client. Thanks.